Thank you very much, Ian. Terrible thing to be a speaker between an audience and its martini lunch, I'm sure. Um, but I was delighted when I got the invitation from Ian to become an agent provocateur, something I never thought I'd be. Uh, I was looking for the polite, the polite English word for that, troublemaker, I guess, is what it would be. Um, uh, though I've usually been a troubleshooter. Uh, our paths have crossed several times before. When I was the Assistant Deputy Minister of Culture at the old Department of Communications, uh, I recommended him to uh, replace, I guess it was Mr. Smith, uh, Wilf Smith, uh, as the uh, Dominion Archivist. It was a propitious time to be doing it because we just managed to get through Parliament uh, uh, an interesting process, an archives, the new Archives Act, which replaced the one from 1921, I think it was. 1912. Well, I've, I've got the numbers wrong there. Uh, in any case, I was uh, overruled by the minister, and someone else was appointed, and I moved on to become the deputy minister at Queen's Park of uh, Culture and Communications. And I uh, immediately hired Ian to run the archives uh, of Ontario. I hired him from Saskatchewan, by the way, my home province, uh, of course. Uh, and uh, he did revive the Ontario archives. And very shortly after that, a few years after that, when the federal position became open again, I lobbied very strongly for his appointment, and he was appointed. And he certainly didn't uh, disappoint. When he was at the province, we called him uh, uh, the uh, behind his back, of course, the uh, the provincial anarchist. And uh, and of course, then he moved up to be the national anarchist, I suppose. Um, I uh, I'm actually uh, an inveterate pack rat, so I'm perhaps come to this uh, love of archives uh, naturally. Although I have to confess, my father was uh, one of the founders of the Ontario Genealogical Society, and perhaps I get it by uh, sort of genetic default. In any uh, case, I, over the years in various capacities that I've had, I've spoken about Canadian artists, and about Canadian art, and about Canadian cultural policy, and, um, and then uh, since I've worked for Sotheby's, as the president of Sotheby's for the last 12 years, I stepped down at the end of June. I also spoke about what it was like to work inside of a multinational uh, company like Sotheby's. So I've worked for two universities, all three levels of government, and a multinational corporation, and I can't actually come to any conclusion about which bureaucracy is the worst. Uh, they're all pretty well equal in my uh, estimation. Uh, Sotheby's is interesting. Uh, it started, it's, I'll just very quickly say that its first sale was outside the UK, was here in Toronto in 1967, and the whole international art auction business, and Sotheby's last year was $5.4 billion worldwide, so it's pretty big, developed in a very uh, quick way, and I, for a variety of reasons, I think perhaps the most important uh, was that there, there was a rising prosperity and there was this interest in collecting things. Uh, the collecting was not just art, which we did see uh, at Sotheby's and Competition Christie's, but also there were these rages over cabbage patch dolls, uh, swatches, carpets, heaven knows there were all sorts of fads that came and went in the process, stamps not so much, but feeding it, and I think actually linked to it, is, was in fact the idea of genealogy, where there are so many people, and which, which is in fact the largest hobby uh, activity in the world. So the idea of saving uh, things from the past, and also that uh, the curiosity about the past is a very interesting aspect that has been touched on here already this morning. Uh, several times. I call it the, um, the Antiques Roadshow Syndrome, uh, which actually began in the UK, it spread to, the, to North America, and has subsequently spread through Asia and, uh, and South America. It's quite an interesting time that we live in. 
So it seems to me that it's a very propitious time to get public support for archival activities. And it's odd that the archival community is so enthusiastic about what it does, and governments seem to be so much less enthusiastic than they ought to be. Uh, and uh, so we have to figure out how to match those two things. Um, so I think a lot of the seeds have already been planted. It's only a matter of them coming to fruition. Uh, as an example, I did a report to establish the cultural department for Metropolitan Toronto back in the uh, uh, early, I guess, mid-70s, 76 or 77. First recommendation was to establish an archive, which they did not have at that point, and subsequently uh, uh, the, the, that issue was, re, uh, was addressed, and they actually built a real building and have an actual archive. Uh, the same is sort of true, I believe, for the uh, Cinematheque Ontario, which didn't exist, but uh, uh, found, we found some money when uh, Ian was uh, with, the, uh, with the archives in Ontario and got it set up, it's now part of TIFF. Uh, the management of information is an archival uh, specialty, and I noticed Mr. Garreau this morning mentioned the, uh, uh, the solution collective, and uh, I would say that the, the, the présence uh, collective is something that needs to be worked on, and I would actually say there are three major thrusts that uh, uh, one would uh, have to pay some attention to. One, is the legislation in place in each jurisdiction uh, adequate for the present and for the future? I think in, in a number of cases it is, but in a number of cases it may not be. Then the, there's the issue of the financial resources, which a lot of people have already commented on. Uh, is it sufficient? And I think um, one of the things we perhaps you have to need to do is look at it from the government point of view. I had this uh, discussion at one point uh, over the issue of whether libra the library, the National Library, and the Dominion Archives should be joined together. And I uh, said at the time that it, uh, it should not unless there was an appreciable increase in the amount of resources available to it. Um, this was something I learned at Metropolitan Toronto, by the way. Uh, if there was one budget line for all the cultural activities that Metro was going to support, I would say, well, let's, uh, the next year I would break it into two or three budget lines, uh, making sure that we actually picked up a little more money along the way, quite a bit more if possible. And then when people got comfortable with that, we'd uh, consolidate. And instead of having three budget lines, we'll have one budget line. We'd try and get the money up each time. Uh, I think the same thing probably happened with the split between the Canada Council and SHRC, uh, which I, uh, which I, under Mulroney, uh, they tried to put it back together again. Uh, I supported putting it back together again, but my real argument was there's, the only reason for doing that is it is easier for the government to deal with one agency rather than two, uh, but the real argument is, is there enough money in the system? If there's enough money in the system to do the job properly, then uh, it's okay to join things together and uh, find a way of functioning. You'd say the same thing for the uh, uh, Canadian Museum of Contemporary Photography and the National Gallery of Canada, uh, but the, though unfortunately that photography museum is now gone. Um, and third, I think, is the, uh, what Ian referred to as the uh, the uh, public awareness of the archival role, several other people mentioned it as well, that is very important indeed. Uh, and I don't think it has a sufficiently high priority uh, to achieve the kind of awareness that has been referred to by uh, Glenn Wright and by others uh, as yet. Uh, it's very important indeed. And I think, uh, I think it's, very uh, difficult to change, allocate resources in order to do that. It's, it's a tough world out there in the world of public relations and, and public awareness, uh, advertising and marketing. 
And I'm reminded of a comment that a friend of mine who was in children's literature uh, publishing uh, business who said, it's a bunny eat bunny world out there. Uh, finally, I think of the archives uh, as a collective records. The idea of collectivity really intrigued me about it. A repository, a depository, a reservoir of uh, information and things. Uh, and I think uh, whether it's local or provincial or national, the, the archives represent us as a society. And I think it's important to keep an idea on this idea of collectivity and, and the kind of it being part of what defines the kind of society we live in or the kind of society we want to live in. It's an intellectual, social, cultural, scientific, and political treasury. Um, and uh, lastly, I would say the, the battle against the Philistines, which we all know we uh, fight, is never won. Uh, we often think if we could just get, get a breakthrough on one occasion, that would be it. We'd have uh, won over everything and everything would be fine. That will never happen. The battle is an ongoing one as one that we just have to face up to and keep hammering away uh, un, uh, until we get some of the things we want. I like Mr. Doughty's um, idea of a, a gift from one generation to another. It's actually the gift of a, of a form of, uh, of what I think of as spiritual capital, uh, a capital uh, for the values and characters of our society. It's a, it's a vital living gift, and it, I always used to end uh, talks I gave by quoting David Milne, who asking Vincent Massey and his uh, wife, Alice, for, uh, to buy a lot of his work, his lifetime of his work, a uh, thousand paintings at five dollars each. I said it's a support of this kind that actually allows the artist to go on uh, working that really counts in the long run. All the millions spent on Rubens and Rembrandt and Velazquez after they died only serves to move the paintings around a bit. It adds nothing to art. And I think, uh, when I think of archives, I think that artists living today don't live in the moment. They actually do have a tradition. They need the tradition. They need the support today in order that they can uh, leave something for tomorrow. So the archives are yesterday and today and tomorrow. So that's it for me. Thank you, Ian. Thank you.